Hello everyone, welcome to the Keyboard Racer Cult, and I am the Guru. In 2019, by a stroke of luck, I drove the Hyundai i30N at Nürburgring, becoming one of the first self-media in China to get in touch with N. Since then, I have formed an indissoluble bond with N. In 2021, at my home circuit, Ruisi Circuit, I became the first in China to test the Elantra N. Ruisi Lab Time perfectly implemented the spirit of JDM overtaking, defeating the well-known black BMW M2C on the leaderboard. The moment I saw the lap time, everyone, including myself, was shocked. A 280 horsepower front-wheel drive sedan was so terrifying. And this 280 horsepower, isn't it exactly the inheritance of JDM Gentleman's Agreement? This is the real hero for the common people. Next, I named its brilliant gearbox the Korean PDK, and the rest is history as everyone knows. The Cilantro N naturally became an unquestionably good car in China's performance car circle with its strong product strength and reputation. In 2023, the Elantra N finally arrived in China. It retained its signature Korean PDK electro friction plate without any castration, which is very conscientious. But because of emission regulation issues, it was fitted with a particulate filter, horsepower reduced from 280 piece to 260 pieces. The sound changed from before to now. And the speed of rev matching during downshifts has also slowed down a lot. So how does the Chinese version of the Elantra N perform? Let's first test the straight line acceleration. The straight line acceleration performance of the Chinese version of the Elantra N actually achieved 5.35 seconds, making it the fastest front-wheel drive car I've driven among all factory cars. I remember there was a theory that the limit of 0 to 100 acceleration for factory front-wheel drive cars is 5.7 seconds. Then the Elantra N is simply a magical car that breaks physics. There's no tire hopping or excessive slipping at the start. Traction control is excellently managed, unlike typical front-wheel drives and the gear-to-gear -gear connection is both fast and stable. Let's head to the track. Go! The final lap time of the Elantra N is 1 minute and 11.5 seconds, ranking at this position on the factory leaderboard. This is a very fast lap time, 1.5 seconds faster than the hot hatch AMG A35, faster than BRZ, and even faster than the Audi S4, equipped with Michelin PS4S star rated tires, nearly catching up with Porsche 718 and Porsche Panamera 4S. And... Actually, this lap wasn't even driven that well because there were a lot of slow cars on the track today, or rather, my N was particularly fast, so it made them all seem slow. In short, I was always being blocked, like here. I was blocked by these two cars at the same time, like here by M2. You should accelerate out of the curve to BMW after all, it should be driven sliding. And encountering slow cars in high-speed corners, I have absolutely no choice but to slow down. Ah, uh, as a result, I overheated the brake fluid. So, in, uh, in the second half of my hot lap, I was always in a state of brake overheating. I didn't brake properly at T8 and T9, nor did I hug the apex, and so, if the car's condition was okay, I think it would be no problem to be a few tenths of a second faster. Welcome to Keyboard Insights. 
Let's take a look at the log data and see where a launch for M was faster than A35. Except for not breaking properly at T8, where the cornering speed was obviously slower than A35, the cornering speeds of the two cars were actually quite similar. Knowing that M has an excellent chassis, it also implies that A35's chassis control is actually very good too. And you should know that A35's tire width is narrower, so AMG does have some skills. Where was N faster than? Mainly in power. 276 horsepower actually exploded 306 horsepower. Although the temperature played a little advantage, what's more important is that N doesn't experience power decline. You see, the two cars were not that different in front, but on the last long straight, N simply blew past A35. Uh, whether it's 0 to 100 acceleration or real battle on the track, it shows that the reduction of 4 horsepower does not affect its powerful performance. The GPF also didn't slow down its speed. The Korean PDKA performed steadily with fast upshifts and logical operation. I didn't touch the paddle shifters throughout the track. It, it perfectly handled the gear position for every corner. So why doesn't slow down shifting affect lap time? I've mentioned this many times, and I think the average keyboard racer understands, but just in case, let me explain again. In terms of lap time on the track, you downshift in the braking zone, and the braking zone usually lasts quite long, maybe 2-3 to three seconds. Even if downshifting slows from a very fast 0.1 second to 3 times slower at 0.3 seconds, as long as the downshift is completed within the 2-3 to three seconds of braking, it will affect the lap time. Right? That is to say, downshifting speed is not a bottleneck for track performance. It doesn't need to be very fast, but whether downshifting can be executed and whether the logic is reasonable are key to track driving. In these aspects, the Korean PDK's level is very online. As for whether it can recover the sharp downshifting of the international version, I'm also researching this possibility with Mr. Zhao from the Horsepower Project. We need to wait a bit longer to give everyone feedback because he hasn't got my car yet. Next, let's talk about some advantages of the new model. First, about steering feel. I had given feedback to them in 2021, telling them that the car did not feel as sharp as the i30N I drove at Nürburgring in 2019, and we talked many times, including after 2022, when N was confirmed to be introduced to China. I also went to Hyundai's headquarters to discuss this matter. So the new car changed the steering machine. I don't know if I had a bit of contribution, but driving it feels really good. The steering is realistic um, and a bit heavier, having a bit of that E95. Additionally, they strengthened the engine mount, raised the rear suspension by 5 millimeters, and changed the bushing material, which is said to make pressing the curbs more stable and improve lap times on the track. Okay, the differences of the new Chinese version have been talked about. To sum up, it lost 4 horsepower, downshifting became slower, but steering feel improved, and the chassis was slightly enhanced. Next, let's talk a bit about the driving feeling of this car. It's not really the kind of fun car that drifts easily, but more of a serious performance car flavor. Stable, controllable, and efficient. Everything feels just right, and there's almost no torque steering, which has a certain relationship with the IDA's integrated drive axle. Uh, it comes out of corners very smoothly, uh, almost without understeering. There are also drawbacks, such as the brakes being average. So I say it's like M power, because M's strengths and weaknesses are very similar to it. Um, ends brakes also tend to overheat, and once they start heating up, the time it takes to build braking pressure becomes very slow. There's a bit of a delay from the moment you press the brake to when the braking force is established. There's no impact in daily driving, but on the track it makes a difference, affecting the effect of entering a corner. So, regarding this problem, I might try changing the brake fluid to see if it improves. Because the feeling of soft brakes after running laps is very much like overheating and boiling, leading to increased water content. I suspect it's because the factory brake fluid, considering domestic use, is not racing oriented. I'll provide feedback on which brake fluid is better after changing, but I won't expand on daily driving. I think it's very good. I can talk in detail about mountain running if I have time. Uh, if, if there are many people interested, I'll record a first person perspective. Okay, that's about it for this episode. Um, to sum up, it's still very valuable because you can experience a real performance car at a very low price, unlike the sports models like S3 and A35. They are also fierce, but not pure performance cars, a bit different. Okay, that's all for this episode. If you like track content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.